hey everyone jeans are changing shapes disney is trying to compete with shitting wizards and bungie breaks free hey welcome to tnj syndrome i'm tim i'm mitch and i'm jason and away we go But first, you know what we got to talk about? What's that? Asymmetrical jeans, man. It's the new thing, and y'all got to buy it. Mitch, you got your asymmetrical jeans yet? Hell yeah, I got my asymmetrical jeans. Hell yeah. Jason, you got your asymmetrical jeans yet? No, if it's cool, I won't do it, so I have my hammer pants. (laughs) I only do two flares, man. No. No. This is what we have to do. We have to do asymmetrical jeans for everybody, which is the right leg super fitted. The left leg is the flared flared jeans. So you walk kind of with the weird, weird limp kind of thing. So it's like something under- designed by Tetsuya Nomura. I mean, I don't know why that gives you a limp. <laughs> because they're all like your jeans are all catching the wind and shit. So they're like they're flopping all around and knocking over like cups off of tables. You know, I I will say one of the biggest struggles that I have when I get up in the morning and get ready for the day is deciding whether or not to wear my fitted jeans or like my slim fit ones or my ones that flare out. And and now with asymmetrical jeans, I don't have to choose. I can just wear them and I get the best of both worlds. You just get the best of both worlds. It's great. Like if someone sees you from one side, you look like kind of a hipster. And if you see you from the other side, you look like kind of a douchebag. I mean, no, you know, just, yeah. Yeah. Where the heck do they sell these things? Like an Air American Eagle or H&M or something? Uh, I don't know if any. Well, no, hold on. Did I just find a link? Hold like on. when I'm looking at these, I just think of Jinko jeans, which was a fad when I was growing up with like Juggalos and Ravers, I guess. Yep. And that died real quick. Like, who's wearing this? Like, what subgroup started this shit? Is what I'm wondering. Because that's where all most fads start, is like a subgroup starts it, and then the mainstream is like, oh my god, that's so dumb. And then eventually it just creeps up on them, and they're wearing it. Well, I see it on the Kesnia Schneider Instagram account. I probably, like, butchered the shit out of that yeah is that what i gotta do to see this is it on instagram uh yeah totally on instagram do you have to buy it like directly through instagram you know well there's so there's a shop dot snia schneider.com rob schneider.com okay yep we'll call her name's rob schneider from now on but i don't see asymmetrical jeans on her website although i do see a lot of other funky jeans on her website like there's these jeans that are like half cutoffs but like there's then there's like like a back piece that goes all the way down so it's like a normal pair of jeans but then with like another pair of jeans on top of those pair of jeans that have been like cut off like you would change your jeans into shorts so they're like short jeans but but like with not but with pants still, they're called dungarees. Is that a is that a thing? Yeah, that's yeah, a thing. That's a thing. Well, because dungarees are like overalls, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's that an thing? overall. Yes. So so it's they're overalls, but then there's like cutoffs. I don't know. This this is weird. I guess High we just accidentally man. plugged her website, didn't we? Yeah, probably. It's fine. I want some money, Rob Schneider. What's her Is name? Tr- Ksni- K- it starts with a K. Ksenia. And I, I assume Sen- the K is silent. So it's Sena. Senia. 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 Yeah. Senia Schneider. Senia? That's what I think. Santana? That's how I think you pronounce her name. Senia Sch- and then Schneider. No. Senia Schneider. Okay, there you go. It does have her name on there. When it's all one together, I got to find out where the where, where the break is. Yep. Senia the Paper Mache Tiger Showroom in Paris. Oh, so this fad came from Paris? Uh, yep. Okay, we're Looks fucked. Like <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a thing if it came from Paris, man. It's like some Mugatu shit. 
People are going to be wearing <laughs> trash bags soon. <laughs> Derelict. Derelict. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I could dare lick my own Although, butt. Thank you very much. People in the audience may be saying, thinking that this is our get off our lawn moment and be like, you guys are just out of touch. You don't know. You don't know about the asymmetrical genes. Do you think I they'll make like- love it. If someone yeah. is listening right now and they're just like, fuck you, asymmetrical genes are great. Like, I would love that. That would make me so happy, and I would love to hear about it. Well, do you think they'll make like asymmetrical like sweatpants so you can take them to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> this would be really freaking cool, right? Like when Everybody I'm be looking at you, but like, why is one poofy and one not? Like, Don't shut fucking up. talk to me about my style. I'm trying to work out. <laughs> oh right because you could be sassy about it because you're working out yeah and if you had a personal me that's like a personal trainer's worst nightmare too like if you're like doing legs but you can't tell if your form is right because you can't see one leg because of the poof it's so poofy it's just like the king is your leg movie yeah that's good all this i always wear parachute pants yeah or like the poof gets stuck in like the treadmill oh shit (laughs) there goes your pants I have a weird imagination. It's stuck, and it's like the cartoon thing where you're just getting like going around the treadmill. What's gonna What's gonna happen is someone's gonna listen to this podcast and heard that I call it the poof, and they're gonna be like, and they're gonna look at it and be like, "Oh my god, it is poofy. I can't wear this." Because everyone will start saying, "Hey, look, it's your poof leg," and like, "What do you need poof? Yeah, like the leg, it's poofy. Like one leg it hugs you, and that one poofs out." You got poof and, leg, and they're gonna Hashtag stop poof leg. They're gonna stop wearing them. I ruined it because I like to ruin everything people like. That's my mo. Yeah, this this designer really likes flared pants. Well, what's mm-hmm. funny is I made a I, I made a comment earlier about Tetsuya Nomura, the guy who does the uh, the art for like Kingdom Hearts. He's got tons of characters that have like that style, believe it or not. But usually. Mm. Like look at look at Titus for example. Like he he designed Titus from Final Fantasy X. Titus has one leg that's half a short, and the other leg isn't. Oh yeah, that's Do true. Do you remember that? Like that's was, totally a thing. He's pioneering this style. Yeah, it's Nomura oh style. I just I've been looking at her website, and I just noticed like these jeans are like five hundred dollars. Oh my yeah. god! So I just found a, a shirt that I want on her website, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's the shirt says "100% T-shirt," and okay. it's 100. It, but then I saw it's 120 bucks. Okay. So oh my god! I think we need to start a GoFundMe for Mitch's ridiculous T-shirt. I don't know if I want 100% T-shirt or 100% basic. I kind of like the basic one. I mean, that would make sense, right? Right. So we're gonna we're gonna yep. do a GoFundMe, not just for the T-shirt, because if we're gonna go in, we're going all the way in, okay, guys. So, and one lady, uh, we are going to get him the jeans and the shirt. So we need, and if the jeans are five hundred bucks, we need at least a thousand dollars. It's a stretch goal. Yeah, I mean That's the true. stretch goal is for getting him multiple pairs of shirts, and and the pants. He's got to have the poof pants, the half yeah. poof pants. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to complete the ensemble. Yeah, and if we get two thousand dollars, then Mitch will actually send a picture of him wearing the pants and the shirt. I mean, he probably will anyway. Don't he'll just be like, "Look at my new jeans. It was five hundred dollars." Because that's a, you know, that's a thing nowadays on YouTube is people like buying really expensive stuff and then making videos of them showing it off. You notice that? You ever seen yeah, those? That makes sense. People are. I horrible. have seen them, but like. I don't know if they're necessarily expensive. I've seen people do stuff off of like the Wish um, website thing. Have you, do you know, are you familiar with that one? Tell me about it. So Wish is like this website slash app that you can buy a bunch of random shit. That's all Chinese knockoffs. uh, And, but it's like really, really cheap. Um, But actually some of it can be pretty expensive, but for the most part, it's, you know, a couple bucks or whatever. And, uh, you go on to wish and you like find whatever you want to look for, whether it's knockoff electronics to clothing to whatnot. And, uh, so 
there's are there are people, um, mostly girls, mostly women, that will go through at least that I've seen anyway that will go through and order like uh, dresses off of there, and they'll do try-ons of dresses, um, to see if like the actual dress is worth it or if by the time that they get it, it like falls apart. And uh, half the shit that people order off a of wish because it's coming from China takes like six months to get to you. Jesus. Yeah, but it's great because you can go on there and just order things for like a couple bucks, like five bucks here, five bucks there. And then you forget about it. Um, and then, you know, six months later, you get a package in the mail. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's like a little surprise for you. You get a bun- you little surprise in the mail. Yep. You got to be looking out for those Chinese knockoffs, man. Like, I remember one time I saw this Facebook ad for a a jacket that was Leon Kennedy's jacket from Resident Evil 4. I was like, oh, my God, I want that. And you know, for me, I'm not real smart until I make a mistake. So I didn't know this is like a two years ago. I, I didn't know really about Chinese knockoff. So I order it with PayPal and it, everything seemed legit. Well, I went, I, I didn't get the jacket for like ever. Like it was like two months. And then I, I started like, I started hampering their support. And thankfully I pay with PayPal. They're like, Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Wait a week. So I wait a week. And I get nothing. And then finally I was like, send me this thing or I'm making a complaint with PayPal. They never did, and I made a complaint with PayPal, but I didn't have to read the fine print and find out that everything was coming from China, and it probably would have sucked anyway. But apparently, that's really prevalent, and I'm really dumb. Huh. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, I, I maybe it's just because my curated ads, I always see like cool cosplay merchandise on on ads so i'll see like the like i said i'll see leon's coat from resident evil 4 or i'll see assassin creed hoodies you know and they're like oh my god it looks so cool like it's all chinese bad garbage <laughs> i mean that makes sense yeah. i mean the assassin's creed hoodie is probably pretty cool uh so a friend of mine ordered one of those and it was real shit it was from it was from china i mean like all of your clothes are from china so you're just saying it was a poor quality piece of clothing from China, from China. My underwear is not from China. I mean, not all of my clothes are from China. You bought $40 underwear. That's right. I, I'm American made, baby. Oh, actually, yeah. ca- actually Canadian made, but hey, whatever. North now, American if you, made. If you want a really cool Assassin's Creed hoodie thing, go to Volante Design. Those are the ones that I, uh, I think you were there with me, Jason. You got a, you got a vest from them. Those are the best. Oh, yeah. that those I got guys are, from those Comic people Con. are badass, but they hand make everything, don't they? They do. And yeah. it shows and their shit is awesome. And yeah, I think that's really badass. nice. Yeah. We're going to plug those cool that we, we met them at uh, Comic Con. Uh, they do really good work. It's awesome. That's the kind of stuff that, I've been trying to, like, for example, find a vintage, well, not really a vintage, just a like goth shop because I'm trying to do a project. I'm trying to make a costume and I'm looking for like a gothy Victorian coat. And that, and out here in the in this area, that's actually really hard to find. But where I'm from in Michigan, like I could go down to Royal Oak or Detroit and find those places like crazy, but not so much out here. But handmade clothing is really hard to find sometimes. So it's, you know, and trust too, especially if it's on the internet, you know. Yeah, I get that. I don't know where you would find goth stuff anymore. Like I, growing up when I was in you know middle school, Hot Topic was the goth place. Nope, Hot Topic is mainstream but, now, baby. Yeah, now it's full of Pokemon and and Invader Zim and and I don't know where you get studs and like studded belts or boots anymore. Online, baby. But you're you're really rolling the dice. That's the problem. If it's gonna be good or not, so. Yeah, or even fit for that matter. Uh, I had a friend growing up that did uh, his own chainmail stuff, and uh, he like was teaching me how to do it a little bit. I didn't really get very far into. It. I think I made like a chainmail bracelet or something. Um, but he made himself like an entire chainmail uh, shirt. It was it was awesome. That's awesome. It was yeah, it was cool. Uh- that there we go. That's what we need to do. We all need to take classes where we can make our own stuff, and then we can make our own costumes too. That's, that's what we need to do. What Let's would your costume it. be, Jason? I don't know. A uh, chainmail with Victorian coat. I don't know. <laughs> like a, like a, 
Blood Souls. Yeah, we'll combine character. Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Yeah. And then uh, we'll go to, we'll go to Comic Con and be like, "What character are you?" And just hit people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the character I am. Oh no, I'm from I'm from Bloodborne. Like, die! Like, everyone, someone that I smack with a sword. Be, that would be a funny video if somebody was dressed like a Bloodborne character and then there's like a werewolf, and you just like have a face off, a fake one, but you know, plays the Kill Bill theme when you see him. You know, ban, 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 ban. Oh my god! Like so that. what you're saying is we need to do this, and then we need to have like you dress up, and we'll go go on Comic Con, and then I'll rock behind you with like a little Bluetooth speaker, so I can play the <laughs> the Kill Bill soundtrack. <laughs> yes. Yeah, as you're walking down the aisles, we gotta hope that like werewolves are popular, though. You know, they're always like mm. the coolest I, person if you have I, your own theme music. I feel like they were back in like 2008 when Twilight first came out, but we were, I don't know if we can do that anymore. You know? Yeah, but they're like the little like Care Bear werewolves. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're not, they're not like, like lichens. They're just wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you talking about the, the, Twilight werewolves? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, not, yeah, oh, they're yeah. like just big wolves. They're not lichens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. That's always my like, big beef about True I Blood. Mean, the, they, the wolves in True Blood were all stupid. I mean, the yeah, they, were, like, they weren't Twilight. even big. Yeah. Wolves in Twilight were actually like probably the he, coolest thing of that movie. Like when they turned into wolves. Like, yeah, like, oh my God, those wolves are huge and crazy. That's really cool. And then every single time there was a, they're like, oh my God, they're about to have a fight scene cut away and she's crying <laughs> I hate this movie <laughs> yeah tim the movie's not about the wolves yeah the it's movie's about not about the wolves and her not about the fight scenes it's about can her you, feelings can you imagine like the producer was like hey guys a lot of boyfriends are going to come to this movie with their girlfriends why not give them some sweet action scenes and they're like no <laughs> she's gotta cry we gotta lead up to it and then not deliver <laughs> yeah, this is not sense. a movie for boys yeah I can imagine that kind of conversation happening <laughs> I uh I watched the Twilight movies with a riff track you know the you know the mystery science theater guys the riff tracks oh they were probably oh, yeah. good, pretty good oh, it was way. amazing it was so funny also another good one was X-Men 3 with the riff tracks I Which one was Twilight X-Men with the 3? That's the one where uh, X-Men Last Stand is what it's called. That's the one where they, they had the Dark Phoenix. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really bad movie, but it's great with the riff tracks. Highly recommend you know, it. Yeah, that one wasn't very good nope. out of all the X-Men movies. Nope. But now Disney owns X-Men again, so... Eh. Reboot. Mm. <laughs> Fuck your favorite movie. <laughs> oh, Get out of here, mouse. Uh, did you hear about Disney hiking prices up? Disney World and Disneyland? Yeah, man. They're... I mean, they're going up by... Like, they're going up, right? But it's not... It's not like they hike their prices by like 50%. Like they just hiked their prices because they're greedy and they and they can like the thing is those especially Disneyland is so freaking busy like they're hiking their prices almost out of necessity to keep people stop to keep coming. people from going. Yeah, <laughs> especially because they're going to have the new Star Wars land. You know, oh, it's going to be a bunch of fucking fanboys. there trying to live out their fantasies. Yeah, I won't. I won't go to Disneyland for a while. Neither will with, I. Wouldn't go anyway. Like that, gal like that Galaxy Edge looks really cool, but it's going to be just a completely miserable experience for the first like six months. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like wall to wall people. Like, uh, we went to uh, Disneyland once during Christmas, like over like the Christmas weekend or whatever. 
that was the worst experience you could ever have. Like it was so crowded that they were, they closed the park. Like they wouldn't let new people in. And like you're walking, you're walking through like, uh, like walkways and it would, it was just like wall to wall people. Just like you couldn't even really move. Like you couldn't even like swing your arms to walk how crowded it was kind of thing. Wow. Damn. Like it, it reminded me of like to give you a visual. It reminded me of like the pictures of like the Japanese subways. (laughs) <laughs> it was like that you're all gonna like it <laughs> you're all gonna like it have have fun wait fucking three hours to go on stupid teacups piece of shit give me the money <laughs> yeah here, mouse <laughs> what God. if like what if everyone's massive belief in mickey mouse made him real dude right like, you know how they, that old philosophical saying, like, gods exist because people believe? What if this Mickey Mouse just, like, all of a sudden just manifests in reality? Dude, but if that was an actual thing, Mickey Mouse would be real, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. People but, put so much faith in Disney, Disney's land, Disney, Disney, Disney. Ugh. But but what would be even funnier, though, is if he manifests as, like, a greedy corporate, you know, CEO, <laughs> like a giant freaking cigar like yeah super because because like, oh, not only do people believe in mickey mouse but they also have like a negative sentiment against like the big corporate greed of it at the same right. time so like they combine together when the real mickey mouse is there <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all your money but our year-over-year profit margins are only six percent we wanted them to be seven i'm raising the prices on your fucking store fucking disneyland <laughs> thanks for all your money <laughs> buy some more shit goddamn I got, mouse i got your childhood in a box <laughs> right? and i'm not letting go <laughs> oh it's so true uh yeah disney will be Di- galaxy's edge i'm i'm actually very interested in what it's like because it's supposed to be that Galaxy's Edge is supposed to be like, um, it's supposed to be like Harry Potter land. Like it's supposed to be their response to Harry Potter land. And Harry Potter land is freaking sweet. It's really cool. And well, like, it's interactive. Uh, it's only cool, cool is if they have wizards <laughs> shitting themselves. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. It's new canon, right? Yeah. Does that happen? I mean, you're asking, do actors <laughs> shit shit in the street and then magic it away in yeah, Harry Potter land what, at Universal Studios? What is that what you're JK asking? J.K. Rowling said is canon now. Yeah. No, I would say that does not happen. They don't make the they don't make it that as immersive. <laughs> what if the workers took a shit? And then some guy in a costume came out and he's like, he picks up the shit, puts in a bag and he's like, and like leaves. (laughs) Oh, man. You Uh, know, I mean, I I would give him like a like a A for um, A for immersion, right? Yeah. Like, like, man. Harry Potter world is really getting intense. They have really committed to the immersion factor of that park. I'm so glad they're into the lore. (laughs) It's very important. Well, yeah, I didn't mean to sidetrack your thought. Harry Potter land is very cool. Go ahead. I mean, that was it. Harry Potter land's awesome and it's super immersive and all the areas look like, They really go all out with making it look like you just walked into like Diagon Alley or like the Harry Potter world, right? Yeah. Um, And apparently the Galaxy's Edge is supposed to be like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, it definitely piques my interest, but like I said, I think the first six months are going to be just horrible to be anywhere near that area. So what do you say, Mitch? Are we going? I mean, I, I I think so. I I think we should all. Go I, I think that my my immersion will go up because, like, when you go to when you go to Harry Potter Land, right? Like, 
The thing I want from Harry Potter land is a butterbeer. The thing I want from Star Wars Galaxy Edge land is blue milk. They absolutely said that they are going to serve blue milk. Wait, are they going to have death sticks? Probably. Oh, I you, don't, you don't want to buy any death sticks. <laughs> uh, I think that we should all go to Star Wars, Star Wars land together, and we should write a vlog about it. Within like, the first six months that it opens, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. I'm scared. No, you're gonna you're gonna go, and we're just it's just gonna be us like traipsing around, and freaking Jason next to a next to Dude. a Darth Maul thing, and he's like, "Her, this is great." I would and it's like, <laughs> I would I'll love take a bunch of pictures of you hanging out with stormtroopers. I would love to pull that old troll where we dress like Star Trek characters. <laughs> go there. That would be pretty good. <laughs> like you ever watch that old school uh, Triumph the Insult? comic dog skit for i think it was episode two yeah where he's like he has some guy dressed like as spot come and just flip off the entire yeah it was a bunch of people waiting for phantom menace oh yeah that's, that's how right. old that is yeah um it, so what's funny is if you were to do that and dress up as a character you would get kicked out of the park because they don't let you dress up that's true that is why uh I think I talked about this before. It's called Disney bounding. Oh yeah. You did talk about this. Yeah. Go Cause you are again. not, you're not allowed to dress up fully. So there's this thing called Disney bounding that you do where you, you dress up uh, similar, but just enough to where you're in normal clothes. But like you would wear um, like if, if you were dressing up as a Disney princess, for example, right. And you were wanting to dress up as like bell, you would wear um, the colors that she would wear, but not a not like a, a bell dress. And so that's how you get away with it. It's a thing. It's a big movement. Yeah. So we could we do that with Star Trek characters? Uh, I mean, like you just put like the makeup ears to make yourself look like so, Spock and you're just like, that's just how my ears are. So but here's the thing, right? Like I you can't dress up as disney characters at disneyland right because it breaks the immersion for little kids right because then you know you don't want to be the guy walking around dressed like goofy next to the actor that's dressed like goofy but star trek <laughs> but star trek isn't disney so can you i think they'd still as- kick you out of the park i don't know we can definitely try it it's a costly. Uh, will they kick you out? Or does it make you change? Will they let you back in after you changed, or do they like revoke your access completely? Mm, I I, I bet don't know. They would let you back in if you changed. Yeah, because that would be a, a quite the expensive prank, <laughs> right? It's like two hundred dollars a day or some BS. Fuck that, God. Well, if you want a park hopper pass, anyway, oh. which you would because they have California Adventure, which they have remapped everything there to be like Toy Story Land or some shit. Which is great. There's another one that's coming out. Yep. This year. Yep. Uh, So as a side note, I was looking up the whole wizards pooping (laughs) thing. (laughs) And uh, because I'm like, I, I hadn't heard of this. And yeah, I guess it's on it's on Pottermore. Uh, J.K. Rowling put on there that they have no need for chamber pots or toilets because they just, uh, you know, they, they go where they stand and they vanish them away. And then uh, on Tumblr, someone was like, oh, this reminds me of the Huffle, Hufflepuff group, group masturbation tweet. <laughs> and then there's a string of tweets Someone asked J.K. Rowling, does Hogwarts have sex ed classes? And she replied, unfortunately, no. Wizards tend to be a little more conservative with such things. Of course, like all teens, they eventually figure out an experiment with sexuality. For example, group masturbation sessions are exceedingly common in Hogwarts dormitories, particularly Hufflepuff. <laughs> Is this a real thing she said? Uh, so it's a, it's a screenshot of a tweet. I'm trying to find the actual tweet right now. It probably uh, got taken down. So I can down. verify it. 
Yeah, it might have. I don't know. Like, like something like that sounds like it would have gotten taken down. Like she's on Ambien late at night, <laughs> replying to tweets, and someone, someone in the morning who's like their social media person, is just like, ah, oh, god damn it, why? <laughs> I told you to take the take the friggin' social media account away from her and send it all through me. Why? <laughs> Why'd you hire me if you're gonna allow this? Oh, here's a here's a post saying that they're fake. Damn it. I'm gonna go with the first well, one. The, they the, probably tweeted them and took them down. The wizard shitting thing is definitely not fake. Uh no, apparently that's on Pottermore. Yeah, wizard shitting is a real is a real thing she said. They just shit anywhere. And then they magic their shit away. And there's an excerpt about it in the in the Chamber of Secrets, I guess. I don't know. Wait, really? I don't know. Uh, this is just a, it's a stupid clickbait website that I'm on. So who knows what's real and what's fake? Obviously, I got duped by those stupid tweets. But you know what? It was a lot of fun. So did you guys hear that Bungie broke free that from the monster that is Activision? Oh, boy. Here we go. I think their I think their employees were having like a champagne party, like Must with have, real champagne. Like they popped champagne bottles. And... I wonder how bad the the how much uh, how bad they were as a publisher if it was like, yay, we're free. See, it's interesting because Bungie uh, has done this before. Like they used to be they used to be owned by Microsoft because of like Halo, right? And uh, then. They f- they figure out a way to somehow spin themselves out of Microsoft, and keep uh, Halo with them. I think. I don't think they own. They don't. I didn't think they kept Halo. They did they not keep Halo. No. Well, this one they actually are keeping the rights to Destiny, which I thought was interesting. There, I I'm supp- usually like when usually the publisher keeps in control of the IP. There must have been some sort of different deal in the back end. Yeah, I wonder if they went into the deal with some kind of like contract saying if they ever spun out, they would take their IP with them. Because was both. But you know what this means? You know what this means? What's that? It means more launchers. Because Destiny to 3 the is not going to be on Battle.net. Yeah, it's probably, it'll probably be a bungee launcher and it'll be terrible. Or I heard someone, I heard a couple people bring up that it's might is not unlikely they could be on like the Epic Store, for instance. I wonder if, I mean, that would be really bright and smart of Epic to make a deal with them early. Or maybe they'll just right. go on, uh, you know, Epic or Steam slash both. Now that they're not being like tied down. They they can do both, but it seems a lot of these a lot of people doing the epic launcher are taking these like sweetheart deals. I guess you call them timed exclusives. That they're like they're like epic exclusive, but they're they're like not because they eventually will be able to be on other platforms. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. I guess we'll kind of see how it how it has to go and see what this does for the franchise, right? Because every time Destiny makes a game, for there are two games that they've had the game comes out it's shit they release an expansion it gets better i know there's a a lot of argument on on online if that's activision's influence or if that's just bungie being bungie you know yeah Yeah, well i guess i I think the most recent one with destiny 2 because they they obviously had destiny 1 and then they came out with the Fallen King and fixed a lot of their shit, and they made like a really good game. And then when they made Destiny Two, I think the argument was that it was rushed, and so they didn't have a lot of time to do everything correctly the way that they did and fixed in the Fallen King or the Taken King, the Taken King, the Taken King. Was that the first expansion? Yes, for Destiny One. For the yeah, for Destiny right. One. Hmm. So, like, you guys have played more Destiny than I have. Like, what are your... Do you think Destiny 3 will be a much better game now that they're free of Activision? I mean, if, I mean, if they do, like, what? 
what Mitch is saying, that they actually spend the time to build a fully fleshed out game. I could I could see them coming out with a good game for Destiny 3. Because I, I definitely agree, like, Destiny 2, like, before Forsaken came out, was kind of shitty, and just there wasn't much to do. That's what, That was my initial impression of the game. Like, it was just kind of, like, sweet. I went through the story. Now what do you do? Oh, you just do public events over and over again till you get the thing. Like, there wasn't, like, the end game wasn't very much there. And then as they release expansions, now there's more game to play, and it was more interesting. And I played through a bunch of it, and it was super fun. I put a bunch of hours hours into it. So if Destiny 3 is released, like, like if Destiny 3 is released as, like, a fully fleshed out game, like, destiny 2 is right now with forsaken then i could see it doing well if they if they spend a third time doing this release shit and then do expansions later i don't know i'm kind of not interested <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens um because they're not we're not expecting another destiny game for you know at least another year and a half maybe uh it'll be interesting to see what happens uh because next month ea re- re- releases their destiny ish clone uh anthem and so um you know kind of i think i know how I, that goes I, and i'm gonna make a call right now i think anthem's gonna suck bad yeah probably uh but it'll be interesting to see what they do because like there's a there's a few games that have come out that ea has made that have like really cool concepts but the game itself just sucks um so it'll be interesting to kind of see what Anthem comes out with because if anything, destiny three Bungie can just use that as like, uh, as like a test board, right. And for concepts that have come out that maybe people like that they can throw into their game. I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if they'll, cause, uh, I read an article the other day too, that like Tencent, I think it's Tencent or maybe it was another Chinese company, I uh, or NetEase, I don't remember. Um, it's one of those. I think it's NetEase. Like, is, did venture capital um, of like $100 million to Bungie to, to work on other titles? So that money wouldn't be used for Destiny. I wonder what other kind of titles they'd be coming out with too. Uh, Destiny Immortal for the for your phones. Yeah, oh, I was yeah, saying we, we could have a phone game. If it's NetEase and they're a Chinese company, yeah, it might be a mobile offering. It definitely probably wouldn't be a AAA console experience or PC experience for that matter as well. I don't know. Like, um, was it you that showed me that Penny Arcade comic of like um, a fireman talking to this guy? He's like, what's your name? He's like, Bungie. He's like, I gotta get back in there. He's like, you can't. It's on fire. He's like, Blizzard's still in there. <laughs> did oh, yeah. you post that, bitch? Uh, no, another friend did, but <laughs> as he's trying to run into the the burning building, that is uh, Activision. Um, yeah, I think because isn't isn't how Blizzard because wasn't how Bungie was tied to Activision a lot looser than how Blizzard is tied to Activision. Well, yeah, they. I think they're. I, I don't. I don't think you, Blizzard can ever escape because they're not. It's not just Activision and Blizzard's under Activision. They're Activision Blizzard. That is their name. As far as I get, it. I don't. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, like it was an actual stuff. merger, right? Yeah, it was a merger, or like so, they bought them or some shit. So that's not happening anytime soon. The merging is complete. <laughs> what I'm worried is like what investors feel about Activision Blizzard right now because they've lost a lot of value due to all, all the all of the fucking drama that's been happening this year, and now apparently they're being uh, investigated for fraud because of the Bungie announcement. Did you did you guys see anything about that? I saw. I didn't tell me about, about it, but I didn't read about it. Um, mind you, people listening, I am not an expert at how stocks are work but from what i got from the article the gist of it is that the investors felt blindsided by this announcement apparently there was no like earnings report or any kind of like announcement that this is happening so they're treating it the 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 article i read summed it up as the same as like how elon musk made the joke uh on twitter uh they're they're saying that the fact that they just announced this so quickly that they have time to react they're 
so a bunch of people basically are now there's like an organization involved now that's that's investigating Activision for fraud. And that's this is, sort of this is not my forte. You can tell. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's sort of interesting. I mean, because so how that how that works would be like if they're because something like something like one of your sub companies is about to spin away, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you'd call like a material piece of information. <laughs> uh, so they have to disclose that in their earnings reports. So if if there is evidence that anyone in management knew that they were about to do that and they did an earnings report and they didn't say anything about it, that would certainly be like big fines, would be my guess. Yeah, right here. PR Newswire reports that uh, Pomerantz LLP, a law firm specializing in corporate securities and antitrust cases, is investigating possible securities fraud at Activision Blizzard on behalf of investors in the company. The announcement doesn't give much more information. It references Activision Blizzard forthcoming split from Bungie and the resultant drop in Activision's Blizzard stock prices, but details about the in in investigation are largely absent. That's that's what I've that's basically what I kind of said, but yeah. So people be mad. We we do you think it'll be successful? I don't know how this stuff works. I mean, if anything, they'll probably just get a fine and they'll pay for it with <clears throat> another Hearthstone expansion. So, <laughs> right. Oh, Lord. Unless they start fucking up that game and people just stop playing it. I don't know. I mean, how do you fuck up Hearthstone, though? Yeah, I mean, they have a pretty good formula with that one. I think how they... I don't think it would necessarily be them fucking anything up. I think it would be more just people just finally getting disinterested with that genre, you know? Yeah. And they'd have to figure out another way to print money. Yep, totally. I don't know. It'll be kind of interesting to see what happens kind of going forward uh, with not only with Bungie, right? Like now that they don't have Activision breathing down their necks, but like what this also means for Activision Blizzard and their future games and, and whatnot, because it's already a shit show. Maybe they, maybe they want to make it a shit show. So that way, when they come back, they they're trying to be the phoenix born from the the ashes of the flame. They can have a huge comeback story. It's gonna be great. Yep, you heard it here first. Every the next hero. WoW expansion pack, Battle for Kerrigan. Kerrigan comes back from being a god, mm -hmm. and she like wants to take over Azeroth. But you gotta kill her. <laughs> but then Sylvanas is like, "No, I'm the Kerrigan of this universe, bitch!" And then they fight. <laughs> I mean I played that expansion what are you talking about <laughs> uh, the battle music in my head I can just hear Jim Carrey singing the Star Trek battle song <laughs> from Cable Guy <laughs> yep yep announcing yep. new battleground battle for Heroes of the Storm you fight the ghosts of players from Heroes of the Storm that no longer play the game <laughs> uh, wow <laughs> spoiler alert there's a lot of them <laughs> uh oh the next and the next raid boss overwatch loot boxes beat the shit out of the raid boss and hope to get a prize <laughs> It's just a giant box yeah. with like no me with no mechanics. <laughs> you have to you have to go into the boss room, beat the boss. At the end of the boss battle, a window pops up. It's like congratulations, you beat the boss. If you want to buy a loot box, buy five dollars. <laughs> 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 and then you pay five dollars and then <laughs> and you're like and you open the box and it's just like a stupid fucking pet <laughs> it's like god oh, damn it <laughs> <laughs> but you have to beat the box 
boss first and then it's like okay now you can buy again yep oh you want another loot box you got to do the raid again <laughs> in two weeks in two weeks <laughs> it's on a timer no. <laughs> no i didn't get a good roll i have to do the raid again no problem we sell re-rolls at ten dollars a pop <laughs> <laughs> I have to get that stupid minion pet. As of 2020, we're naming we're naming World of Warcraft to give me your money. <laughs> the and the the pet is it, the the pet is just another loot box. <laughs> it's a, the pet is uh like a little a little minion that carries around a loot box and Wait. you can give it money and it'll give you a loot box. Isn't there a loot box minion <laughs> yes. in WoW? Is there? I oh, hang God. On. Oh, look, it's a loot box. Maybe I've, I'm crazy. I could have swore I saw something like that. I, would I don't. I, I think. I think. I think there's a plushie. There's a loot box plushie. Plushie I saw. Oh, of course there is. It's the it's the Overwatch one though. But yeah. Oh, yep, yep. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That this is where we live now. I really want a loot box plushie so I could go to bed with it every night. Uh huh. Let's hope something comes out if I squeeze hard enough. <laughs> that should be because uh, you guys have heard of the. I think we talked. Did we talk about it? Where the the real life loot boxes? Yeah, we talked yeah, about the, the Logan Logan Paul scam. Yeah, the Logan Paul scam thing. Yeah, <laughs> you go and you buy a loot box, and you get a loot box plushie in the mail. Yep. Like Where it. are my Nikes? <laughs> I'll re-roll. Welcome to the uh, shop of the future. You don't know what the fuck you're getting. Well, I mean, I guess what happened is Bungie, Bungie did not like the loot box that they rolled. Yeah, but if they do... That is Activision management. Yeah, but if they... A lot of people were saying, like, if the microtransactions that they put in the game are still in the game, then that's just Bungie, but who knows? Like, I don't know. I, I don't I don't think you'll get rid of that. I mean, like last episode we were talking about Final Fantasy fourteen. Final Fantasy fourteen is a cash shop for cosmetics only, which I don't really have a problem with. It's just yeah. like when it's in your face, you know, and and you have to leave the game. Like and wow, you can see the shop items in the game. And and F F fourteen, as far as I know, you have to actually like it's not in the game. You have to like alt tab and then go to the website and go to the shop. It's, so it's not in your face. I don't know. Well, and see, that's a that's an interesting point too, right? Because like, so Bungie left and they kept the rights for for Destiny, but I don't know if that necessarily means that they're going to change anything for for uh, Destiny too. Like they've they've said that they and all the plans that they've had for this year of DLC that they have going forward is all still in the works and nothing's going to change with that. But it's all still going to be launched on the Blizzard launcher. Right, like you can still buy it through Battle.net, which means yeah, like you're still giving the, uh, Destiny Two. As far as I'm concerned, is Activision Blizzard's property, and so yeah, all of the was... all of the loot, like for well, for the people that are saying like, oh, if they leave the microtransactions in the game, then that's Bungie. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true until you get to add Destiny Three. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is, like that, it would be um, like they'd be under contract, right? Because a lot of the elements of the game and the cycles and the schedule for expansions were all contract contracts with Activision. Well, yeah, but they're like at Bungie itself was under contract, and they broke contract to get out. Yeah, well, that's what I. But that's what I mean in terms of Destiny Two. Like for Destiny Three, you know. I think they'll be able to decide what they want to do. Well, what I really will have to wait. I guess, what I'm saying is, we don't really know, right? Because, like, yeah, they could be under they could be under contract for Destiny Two, but at the same time, they were under contract to stay with Activision for another couple of years. No, oh, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, they I, already I guarantee broke development has already been happening for Destiny Three, mm-hmm. right? So, who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll get a sneak peek at uh, E3. They'll uh, they won't have an uh, an Activision box anymore, right? So Bungie will go and they'll uh, they'll like have like their little cardboard box set up in the back hallway 
somewhere because <laughs> like tickets, you know, a booth is so expensive. They're like, well, now I'm now we're not like a big developer. We're just like a small developer type of thing again. Um, Come Destiny- see us by the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the Destiny games don't have like taglines under them, right? Like it's not like Destiny, Destiny, the blah, 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 blah. Like the expansion packs have that. But what if like Destiny 3 had that? It was like Destiny 3 freedom <laughs> that would be great and like that bob and like bobby kodak is like a raid boss a joke raid boss that'd be great i think people would dig that i would i, I actually don't like bobby kodak at all i would love that if i could just like go because square enix has a sense of humor and final fantasy 15 you can you can download a patch that lets you beat the shit out of the ceo of square enix it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> come on bobby let That's funny it. they would allow that in their game. Yeah. Let us do it, Bobby. Let's let us fight you. He like gets all big on screen, you just shoot him. And when you shoot him, it just turns into money symbols. Ah, I'm absorbing all your money. <laughs> like, oh shit, I'm making him stronger. <laughs> it's like a dude, uh, it would it would have to be like one of those like heavy mechanics fights where there's like money boxes and like in order to win you have to take the money box and throw it at him <laughs> every it, so like, often take it down his shield when you put too many money boxes and then you can shoot him every so often he has like a dialogue bit where he's like i need a new pool <laughs> yeah and then his shield goes back up and yeah. you have to get the money boxes and throw them again i need an eighth house my <laughs> yacht is broken <laughs> And it's like a freaking eight phase boss. And you're just like, ah, this is terrible. He's like, that's right. You hate this. I'm not as rich as Jeff Bezos yet. Keep coming. <laughs> that's everyone's end goal, right? Be as rich yep. as Jeff Bezos and then like lose half your income and divorce. Yep. There you go. Everything minus the last part is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to lose yeah. half so my in, income. So in summary, <laughs> be rich by Jeff Bezos. Yeah. It's all a spy device in everyone's home. You win. Well, I think we I think we covered it, dudes. Oh yeah. We covered a lot of good stuff. Yep. Yeah. It's been a good week. Uh, it has it has been a good week. Uh I'd like to do a shout out to JK Rowling for Giving Jake, us a some interesting us lore material. Uh, JK, if a wizard's peeing, can they magic the pee while they're peeing? Go. <laughs> like it I doesn't even hit the ground. It's just like it, you, you pee, and it's like magically like evaporating <laughs> as you pee. It's like a, it's like a bendy stream away. It's like a bendy straw just like circles yeah. in the air and then it like yeah. flies up. <laughs> also, I'd, also, I'd like an answer about where does the poop go? Yes, please tell us where the poop goes. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. If you're interested in getting these answers from JK Rowling, please tweet at her. Tweet her at where does the poop go? Hashtag where does the poop go? Hashtag TMJ syndrome podcast. Yep. And beyond that, if you're on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on iTunes, you should leave us a review and give us a rating. Um, oh, for God's sakes, we need a review. We have like one. Um, tell us how bad we are so we can improve or how good we are if you like us. Um, yeah. So do all those things. Hey, thanks. Okay, bye. Bye.